Thanks for tuning in to the X's and Argos Film Study. We're actually going to have two film study sessions this week. Today we'll look at Dakota Prukop's quarter of action on Saturday against the Ottawa Red Blacks. And later on in the week, we'll break down what Michael O'Connor did. So be sure to check back for that one. All right, here we go. So we're tight left, uh, run a bunch on the right, deep queen. Chapdelaine did such a nice job getting these guys, uh, young, these young quarterbacks, into positions that allowed them to succeed on Saturday. So Prukop came in the game. His first play was a handoff to Wallet. Then there's the design QB run in the second play, a QB sneak after that. So now here we are on the 13. We've got a tight end in the game. It's been nothing but run plays. And so as the Ottawa defense, you're thinking run. And, and they look like they are. Every defender is within nine yards of the line of scrimmage. And they're not really trying to disguise the coverage. It looks like cover zero, and it is going to be cover zero. The Argos force a switch here. And now this is going to be an easy read for Prukop. He just has to pick the best matchup. And he's got Rodney Smith, a six foot five veteran out of Florida State, going up against either Brandon Dandridge, a 5'11 rookie from a D2 school, or the five foot nine uh, Corey Tindall. So uh, Prukop's going to take Smith against either of these guys because of his size in zero. The switch ends up drawing the shorter the two DBs, and so all you need is a nice, easy jump ball. And there it is. Yahtzee. The protection almost blew this. So the Will Muggs pre-snap, this seemingly triggers a full line slide to the right. So every O-lineman has their gap to the right. Cross doesn't have a route, so... So he's got C-gap leaving Olette to pick up the strong half who's coming off the edge. The Sam is hot if they send eight here, uh, which which they don't because the Will actually backs out. Uh, he ends up taking the underneath hole. There's a Mac twist as the end comes over to attack B-gap. Mac fills C. The cross chases the end, so there's no one left to take the Mac. Fortunately... This is, this is a three-step drop at a shotgun, and you see what a beautiful ball Prukop throws up there for Smith. You can see Prukop never takes his eyes off Smith. There's no need to against zero with a clear matchup advantage. Beautiful high point from Smith. Great play call, too. Trips right king. Trips her to the field. Ottawa is back in cover zero, this time setting the weak half off the edge. The free has Smith in the slot. This is an RPO, a run pass option. So Prukov has a read to make here to decide whether to hand the ball off or to throw the pass. His read on this play is the Mac. So he's only got two live routes here. So Smith, Ralph, Worthy are all stock blocking in this play. Gittins Jr., the number three receiver, has a post. And Edwards from the number two has a slant. So if the Mac gives up the middle of the field, which he does, Prukop pulls the ball back and has to get it out quick. And it's just as well because Tyndall's blitzing right into Olette's path. Smith is actually supposed to pick him up, but he loses him. Fortunately, Olette is there without the ball and he's able to make that block. RPOs are really trendy right now. I'm sure you've heard them talked about a lot. If you're wondering how you can tell the difference between an RPO and play action, the, the easy key is watching the O-line because they're, well, they're run blocking. RPOs are always quick hitters because you have to release the ball before your linemen get downfield. <laughs> and so if you look at this, Randy Richards is, he's a fair bit downfield, but you never really see this get called as long as the QB doesn't hold on to it and wait, which he doesn't here. It's another really good read from Prukop and a perfect ball. And you see him staring down the Mac, pulls it, and fires a strike. Second and 10 from the 15. Argo's motion into trips left to the boundary, queen. The Red Blacks are in quarters here with a pretty cool line stunt. So the nose comes around the edge. 
Prugop's trying to read the high low on the Mac, but before he can do that, he feels pressure from his blind side. I I would really like him to step up here. I I, I think this is actually picked up beautifully by the line. He's got to step it up and check down at at the least check down to Olette. He ends up scrambling into trouble. This is not Jamal Campbell's fault. He's just trying to seal his guy to the outside. He doesn't know that that Prugop's coming out that way because he's not just not supposed to. But now he does some great stuff. So. He tucks the ball when he sees that he's in trouble. And think about how many times you've seen quarterbacks turn the ball over in this scenario because they're holding the ball out there with the right hand in traffic. But he tucks it. And then as he scrambles, he reloads to throw. So, you, And you so rarely see that from young quarterbacks. Generally, once they start to run, that's it. The clock goes off in their head, and they take off. But Prukop still has his eyes downfield. But it's not there, so he tucks the ball again to be safe. And then... Then right before he gets to the line of scrimmage, he spots Olette, so he flips it out to him, and the rookie running back does the rest. From this angle here, you see him looking at the high-low. Internal clock goes off. And you see here how nice a pocket that is, so he should not leave it. But he scrambles, tucks, eludes, looks to throw, tucks again, sees Olette, Touchdown. All right, I wanted to show you this play because it highlights another thing that Chapdelaine did to help out his young QB. He did a really nice job getting that play call in quickly, so Prukop had time to read the defense before taking the snap. And here he simulates the snap, and the motion reveals the coverage. So as Olette takes off and returns, Kevin Brown spills his candies in the lobby. Prukop knows it's man now to the boundary side. He's not even going to bother looking to the quad side. So Edwards has a comeback route. He's got a 10-yard cushion against a rookie from Missouri Western State. So that's a pretty easy matchup decision. Quick five-step, and we're just playing catch now. Quads right to the field, Queen. Ottawa's in cover one, which, again, they don't disguise. Four-man rush with a loop from the strong side end. This is a beautifully timed concept. It's a three-step drop and release. So Smith at the number four, he's got a bang. Giddens Jr., the number three receiver, has a stick route. Edwards at number two has a corner. And Worthy's got a stick as well. So Prukop reads man. Now, if this were first down, I would love to see him go to Edwards on the corner route against Ferris. There's a big play potential there in man. But it's second of four. Prukop makes the right call. Giddens Jr. And look how look how smooth this one is. One, two, three, fire. Smith might not be the best guy for the bang route as he sort of corners like a, a tugboat here. You can see Edwards open up. And you can throw him fatter towards the sideline. There's a lot of space there. From the last angle, you could see that Sherrod Baltimore's first... He's... he's he comes up to play worthy, so there's not really a threat there of him backing up and picking that ball off. So there's a ton of space out there for Edwards, but sensible play call, second of four, get that first down. There's some really encouraging signs on this play. So receivers are split. We got wing right pistol. We can't really see the coverage well, but it looks like quarters to me. Heavy play action, which tends to make a lot of young quarterbacks nervous because the more you sell the play action the less you see what's happening downfield. And you and you feel very vulnerable, especially with this deep half-boot action. But here, Prukop sees it all the way through, commits to that play fake, quickly sets his feet, gets his shoulders around. And the impact of the play action is that the backers come flying in, and now they're fanning out late, and there's this huge void in the middle of the field. So he stares down Gittens Jr. as he waits for Edwards to come across. He's coming all the way across from the far side. And then he sits Edwards down in the void. We look at his throwing motion here. Compact, upper body. Not a lot of wasted motion. And it it's not the quickest release ever, but it's not hurting him. It's not slow. His left arm flops sort of oddly on his release. And his back leg follow through is wide. It's inconsistent when you watch all of his throws. It's... His follow-through is is odd. Now, how does that? You know, how much does that matter? If 
If he's more balanced with his weight under him, he'll get a cleaner ball. But most of his throws come out well, and his accuracy was phenomenal on all of his throws. A slightly quicker release would help. This last play is stuff we've already talked about before, but there's one thing I want to show you. So Ottawa sends eight. They're back in cover zero. Prokop looks comfortable in the pocket, even as it starts to close in around him. Five-step drop, sets his feet, finds his matchup, and again delivers a gorgeous touch pass. So look at this ball. His body's in control. Ball is thrown on the money, and he just lets Worthy go after it. Obviously, Worthy has to bring this in, but this is a beautiful touch pass, a beautiful football. And that should be a touchdown. Prukop had a great quarter of action. I'm really excited to see him face a tougher test this week in Hamilton on the road. So that's definitely something to look forward to. Thanks so much for watching the X's and Argos film study. Don't forget to check out my Michael O'Connor film study session. That's going to be later on this week. And be sure to check out everything we've got going on at xsandargos.com. From recaps to positional grades, articles, features, and links to podcasts, as well as other videos just like this one. I'll see you next time.